These blades will collide at any moment. Anytime. No, actually they won't. This is an anxiety machine, also known as a synchropter, or intermeshing rotor helicopter, which is a synchronized twin rotor turning in opposite directions. This technology was developed by German Anton Flettner in the 1930s. The same guy who developed the Flettner rotor, currently used as auxiliary propulsion on ships to reduce fuel consumption. In 1947, he was taken to the United States as part of Operation Paperclip, which involved over 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians, among them von Braun, the chief architect of the Saturn V program, which took man to the moon. In the US, Flettner became the chief designer of the Cayman Company, where he developed several intermeshing rotor helicopters, with the Kmax series being the most recent. But what's the magic that prevents the blades from colliding? Two factors. There is a 25 degree tilt between the mass, and the rotors are mechanically connected by a set of gears that synchronize them and prevent the blades from colliding. Obviously, a problem with these gears would destroy the blades, preventing it from making an emergency landing with a controlled fall using the auto rotation maneuver. This is when, during the fall, the engine is disengaged from the main rotor system, and the relative speed of the air upwards creates enough force to maintain the movement of the rotors and generate some lift. But I haven't found records of issues specifically in the gearbox of these synchropters, and a helicopter is not like a car where you can postpone maintenance. So it can be powered by a single engine, as in the case of the K-Max, or even two, as was the Kellett XR10. Two engines supplying over 1,000 horsepower make the XR10 the world's most powerful helicopter. As the rotors turn in opposite directions, there is no need for a tail rotor to counterbalance the torque and prevent it from spinning on its own axis, making it lighter with lower maintenance costs and quieter. No tail rotor is needed, for its two intermeshing three-bladed rotors turn in opposite directions. Yaw control, turning left or right, is achieved through a combination of changing the pitch angle of the blades, increasing thrust on one rotor and reducing it on the other, and altering the plane of rotation by tilting the rotor disc forward on one rotor and backward on the other. But that system is for synchropters like the Kellett XR10. The K-Max does not have the conventional hydraulic system with the disc for controlling the blade angle. Instead, the pilot's command is transmitted by a rod that passes through a tube inside the blades and activates a servo flap near its end, which then diverts the air current, making the flexible blade twist and change the angle of attack. The system reduces weight, cost, and maintenance compared to hydraulic ones, as the control only moves the flaps and not the entire blade, greatly simplifying the rotor head and reducing drag in this region, in addition to not needing as much redundancy. This was the system adopted from the beginning by engineer Charles Kamen, the founder of the Kamen Company. He didn't invent it, but he greatly improved it. I'd like you to meet Charlie Kamen, the president and founder of our company. Mr. Kamen, it's a pleasure. Hi, Jack. While still working at United Aircraft, he presented the system to his superiors, who responded, Charlie, we have our own inventor at United Aircraft. His name is Igor Sikorsky. We don't need another one. Soon after, Kaman, at the age of 26, left the company and, with $2,000 from two friends, founded the Kaman Aircraft Company in 1945, manufacturer of this K-Max series helicopter, among others, such as the SH-2G, also with servo flaps. Here's another interesting fact. Charles Kamen also enjoyed playing the guitar, and as he researched composite materials and vibrations for the aerospace industry, he decided to create his own musical instrument industry in 1966. If you see, many of these great inventors have very curious unknown stories involving other projects. Reminds me of Amar Bose, founder of the Bose Audio Equipment Company, who created the electromagnetic suspension system, which works similarly to a speaker. Back to the intermeshing rotor helicopter, this configuration has high stability for hovering and extremely high load capacity, being used mainly in logging operations and heavy transport in the mountains. The K-Max can carry up to 2,700 kilos of cargo, which is greater than the helicopter's empty weight, and almost double the capacity of the Bell 205 using a different version of the same engine, and that's why it's known as the aerial truck. And it is narrow precisely because it is widely used for cargo transport, allowing the pilot to look down more easily, and that's the reason for those oval windows sticking out. It is also more efficient, transporting more cargo per liter of fuel consumed compared to conventional helicopters. Notice how much cheaper it is to transport cargo using the K-Max. This is mainly due to not wasting power on a tail rotor, which consumes about 15% of the total power when hovering, and its absence also makes the helicopter quieter. 
These factors, and for being more compact, even led NASA to carry out a study on a model with intermeshing rotors for urban transportation. And finally, another point is that in a helicopter with coaxial rotors, the wind from the upper blades causes a lot of vibrations in the lower ones, whereas in the synchropter, the interference is somewhat less. But there are some reasons they are not used on a large scale. The main one is that it is not as fast as conventional ones. Comparing it to that bell from before with a similar engine, you can clearly see the difference. There are a few reasons for this. One of them is that the rotor masts are not completely vertical, reducing the vertical thrust generated. Additionally, there is turbulence due to the interaction between the two rotors, leading to a certain loss of lift. In this graph you can see that when the rotors cross, the top one has greater lift and the bottom one has less. There is a fluctuation. If you take one of the two blades and compare it with a simple two-blade rotor, you can see that there is a loss of lift in the intermeshing rotor due to the turbulence and the rotor angle. So if the synchropter goes too fast, the tip of the blade that is retreating will stall much earlier than that of a conventional helicopter, especially on the lower blade, generating vibrations. Just to make it clear, this lower lift is comparing one of the intermeshing rotors with a conventional two-blade rotor. If you take the set of two intermeshing rotors and compare it with a four-blade rotor, the lift of the intermeshing rotor is higher. Another point that works against it, but less critical, is that due to the angle between the rotors, the blade tips are very close to the ground, limiting the aircraft's movement. It even has a warning to approach from the front, not from the sides. But I would like to highlight that few units of these aircraft have been built to date compared to conventional helicopters, so there is still plenty of room for development. As we saw before, NASA itself is interested in these intermeshing rotor helicopters. The fact is that choosing the best aircraft will depend on the mission to be carried out, and as we have seen, this one is efficient, quiet, and has good cargo capacity, despite being slow. But due to low demand, the common company decided to end its production in January 2023. They had already done this between 2003 and 2015, so I think they will resume production once there is sufficient demand again. It's such an amazing machine. Imagine how cool it must be to have the job of these guys. But tell me, from 1 to 10, what was your level of anxiety when seeing this synchropter? Thank you for your company, and until next time.